Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the real problem in Magic the Gathering. And Magic the Gathering, according to Mark Rosewater, has lost over 9 million players in about a year and a half. So it used to be 20 million Magic players with slightly more males than females. Now it's down to 12 million active players with 25 to 35% females. That is a huge drop. I'm not going to go on a rant about gender equality or any of that type of stuff. I'm going to leave that alone. I just want to point out some information that I found. Obviously, I'm opening a shop, or you could call it a pseudo shop, but it will be carrying magic. And some of this is very disconcerting. It is very disconcerting that Wizards of the Coast has to give discounts to a large retailer like Walmart and target and promote those discounts it's very disappointing that wizards of the coast has pretty much forsaken game stores to the point that game stores are going bankrupt left and right and there are some stores selling boxes like david adams for 50 dollars a box when they purchased the box for 78 dollars free shipping and free stuff included are not included in that $50 calculation. It is very disappointing that most of the big YouTubers are now sponsored by even bigger companies and independent or opinions are not as valued anymore because everyone has the same opinion. Oh, great. Magic product is great. It is very disappointing that the most recent sets are horrible, horrible quality. And if Magic survives in the next 10 years, which now I'm having doubts about, we will look at this time period and say, wow, this was the Fallen Empires. Because the card quality was even worse than Fallen Empires. I can tell you, playing at Fallen Empires, at least the cards don't didn't curve. And I, I mean, I don't understand how they can still be so bad. Like, they're really bad. The quality... I I made a someone made a joke to me on Facebook that the Chinese counterfeiters should they Wizards of the Coast should hire them to make all of their cards. It might not be such a bad concept because they tried and failed and tried and failed. Quality testing. So like Rudy says, Rudy's really good at coming up with independent arguments that are not influenced by Wizards of the Coast, which is fantastic because you don't really hear that very often. If Wizard of the Coast admitted that the it was a faulty product, they would have a class action lawsuit. You think the reserve list would sue them? The reserve list was only a bunch of players back in the day. Now it's everyone who opens an Hour of Devastation, Eternal Masters, anything. It just comes off like it is a faulty product because to play Magic, the cards, can, cards cannot be curved. The cards, are, all the foils are coming out curved. It doesn't make sense. Like, to play Magic, the cards have to be as flat as possible so there's no cheating, there's no manipulation. And, and you know, they punish all these people and they let Alex Pacini, who cheat after cheat, he, he just got unbanned and he started cheating again and he's unbanned. He's been banned twice. It wasn't enough for him to get banned once. It wasn't enough for him to get banned twice. He wants to go for the strikeout. And I'm sure that they will just slap his hand and say, good, good job, Alex, we love you. Because you're in line with all these famous content creators we support, and they do support them. So if you think Wizard of Coast does not support cheaters, I have other evidence. So look at the growth, right? This is the growth from the information. So at 2014, there were 21.87 million players. How did we go down to 12 in like such a short span of time? It doesn't make any sense. Like, were we inflating the numbers to begin with? The number I've always heard is we had 20 million Magic players and half of them were females or slightly below half were females. Now we have a new number which says it's 12 million Magic players and 25 to 35% are females. Like, what happened to the other 9 million people, the almost 10 million people? 
we lost almost 10 million people playing 9.87 million people stopped playing the game the stores went bankrupt card quality went to the in 2014 we were afraid of counterfeits oh counterfeit quality is so high now the counterfeit quality is higher than the regular magic cards like that's insane right you could have a counterfeit mana drain in foil and it would probably look better than a regular mana drain from a fresh out of eternal Ma masters box or not even eternal masters internal masters was its own fiasco right fresh out of an iconic masters box like rudy's right the card quality is so poor that they should not be afraid of reserve list lawsuit they should be afraid of this lawsuit like, why are they so afraid of the reserve list when they keep printing such low quality cards and it is faulty product to play Magic, you need the cards to be flat. Even back in the day when we didn't play with sleeves and if you left your foil in the sun, people knew I shouldn't play with a foil that is curved because people would be upset with me. Even back then we knew. So... In 2016, they're saying we have, you know, 1 million registered players. We had 65,000 people playing in the Grand Prix. We had between 15 to 21 million players, they estimate. Now we're estimating 12? What, what happened to everybody? Like, and you might disagree with all this, but you cannot disagree with the price of these boxes. Dragon Maze, under $60, under $50. Born of the Gods, under $55. Pharaohs under 60. These are not recent sets. RTR under 70. And they keep dropping. It's not even Black Friday yet, guys. And I'm seeing like ridiculous prices. Magic Origins, uh, a fat pack, which normally handles value better than a box, is 20 bucks. What <laughs> is going on? And, you know, I'll be quite honest. I don't think it's gender politics. I don't think it's any of that type of stuff. I think it's greed. It's absolute greed. You pun you're punishing your player base. You're punishing them by giving them low-quality cards, right? There's so many other things they could be doing than fighting a gender war. Or I don't know what they're doing. Like According to HQ, they're, they're doing all types of bad stuff, but I don't agree with his points, all of his points. But what are they doing? Like, how can a Chinese counterfeiter in his parents' basement make better magic cards than Magic the Gathering Hasbro? Like, what is going on? And you might ask, you, you might ask, yeah, there are times in Magic history where the dark was not a good time. Fallen Empires, not a great time. Chronicles, a really bad time. Macadian Mass wasn't a great time because it just got off Urza Saga and everyone was on power hype and then we powered down until we had to power up again. I have never... I played Magic forever. Since Beta was my first pack, I still have the Dragon Whelp that was in my pack and I still have the Northern Paladin in my pack. And I have loved Magic for a long time to the point that I really wanted to open a store. It looks like I have to open it now before it goes bankrupt and every store goes bankrupt. And I've seen stores go left and right in Houston. I'll I drop names. Battle Battle Bunker's gone. Swords and Heroes is gone. There's there was that two places in a mall gone, like right back to back. The DNA Comics no longer does magic because it's not profitable. My friend's store no longer does magic. If these stores do not have magic tournaments, you will lose your player base because there's nowhere for them to go. Magic is not a inherently a social event that you can play and that you feel popular doing. It is an event that you need a local game store for people to meet on Friday. Friday, not Saturday, Friday. You know, I've been the biggest criti critic of meeting Friday because I have other stuff to do. But a lot of my magic friends, they want to meet Friday because it's socializing, it's important. It's being part of a community. And Wizards of the Coast totally forgot about that. And the push for more products, more money, more greed, it's not as complicated as it has to be. It's not like gender issues. It's not all these issues some people are saying. 
it comes down to a core element of greed. They got super greedy. Eternal Masters double reprint was super greedy. People got destroyed by that product, right? Because it was unpredictable. It was unpredictable. Modern Masters right after it, super greedy. Unstable plus, <laughs> unstable plus iconic Masters, very greedy. Even terrible products like the gift pack, gift box, incredibly greedy. They want you to spend all your money on Magic the Gathering. So instead of growing the player base so everyone's happy, if the player base grows, then all of our cards become more valuable. At least they hold value. But if the player base go, goes from 21 to 12, everyone, it's like Puker Trade, right? It, why is Puker Trade in trouble now when it didn't used to be? Because it was growing, it was expanding. Now that it's not expanding and it's not growing and it's losing members like crazy, it's in trouble. I'm not surprised Magic Gathering supported Pico Trade because now they're under the same model. Once the Avalanche starts rolling downhill, it's over. So I will tell you this: I personally am not in. I do not want any of these old product, uh, any of these new products, RTR and beyond, has no value. I would not touch it with a stick. You need to invest in reserve list cards because when if this game flops and this fails, no matter what happens, if it goes, if the game goes to forty million players, then reserve list cards will still be the pinnacle of magic, right? But if it goes down to two million players, guess what cards are going to be valuable, and guess what cards are not? Reserve list cards will always hold their value. Old school cards will always hold a value because they hold a unique place in people's lives. This new shit, like, it's just bad. The quality is bad. The cards are bad. I've been telling you forever. I would have devastations on Dave and Adam for less than 70 bucks right now. That's a recent set. That's an in standard set for under $70. I could not imagine that happening. The only time I've ever seen that happen is Dragon Maze. Hmm. So it's not to like say the sky is falling or something. Just be very wise with your money because Wizard of the Coast wants all of it. They want every nickel, every dime. And until they get it, they're going to keep doing stupid stuff like this. Instead of growing their player base, they've lost almost 10 million Magic players, according to research and development. Either that or they lied about it. They lied about the 21... Uh, the 20 million always felt like it was a little high and the 50% uh, percent or 45% females always felt like very high given like my personal experience. But I was like, okay, I guess that makes sense. So to go down from 21 million to 12 in the span of three years, you lost half your player base. Oh, and that's not to talk about this new cunning digital product. <laughs> I mean, I play a lot of mobile games because I design mobile games for fun. Magic is a great card game. I have no idea why they can't hire good developers. I, I just don't get it. They, I, I just don't understand. There's so much money in it for them. Even if they were to sell it, like Nintendo, if they sell the light license to someone like Niantic, right? And they say, Niantic, it's your job to make a game and we're going to give you, you're going to give us 30% for the licensing and off you go. And then they produce a game that's excellent and relevant and can be played on your mobile or your iPad or on a every single platform, it's just like Pokemon Go. It, every single phone can play Pokemon Go pretty much then it's worth it, right? But I, I don't know what they're doing. If you can't develop it in-house, outsource it, license it, make your money, you would make more money from that 30% than you will make from having 100% of a piece of trash. That's just my advice. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye, guys.